Thank you all for joining us for virtual CVI 2020 conference. I'm Dmitry Feldman from Weill Cornell Medical College, New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York. I will be discussing data for covered stents in aorta iliac interventions. I don't have any relevant disclosures to this presentation. Endovascular procedures are very effective for patients with lifestyle limiting claudication and hemodynamically significant aorta iliac disease. 2016 HAACC guidelines give endovascular procedures a class 1 level of evidence A recommendation for symptomatic and hemodynamically significant aorta iliac disease. Aorta iliac interventions are primarily indicated in symptomatic patients with goal of relieving claudication, healing wounds in those with critical limb ischemia, or in order to improve patient's quality of life. More recently, aorta iliac procedures have also been used in asymptomatic patients requiring large bore access for mechanical support devices, for structural interventions like TAVR, or for vascular interventions like EVAR procedures. There has been a tremendous device evolution in peripheral space, starting with catheter dilatation technique in 60s by daughter, followed by bare metal, covered stents, drug eluding stents, and beginning this century drug-coated balloon technology. Task classification has been traditionally used to grade the complexity of iliac disease, with type A and B lesions being most suitable for endovascular approach. In recent years, excellent procedural and long-term outcomes have been demonstrated for type CD lesions as well, making endovascular first the initial approach for most iliac lesions. Traditionally, balloon expandable stents provide precise deployment and greater radial force frequently used in common iliac arteries, where self-expanding stents due to their flexibility have been used in external iliacs. Currently, there are four covered stents available in the US, both balloon and self-expandable. Covered stents are used for bailout and perforations, but also for exclusion of thrombus and aneurysm. By limiting neointimal hyperplasia, covered stents potentially reduce restenosis compared to open cell stents. However, longer treatment with antiplatelet therapy may be needed. Covered stents may be of particular benefit in calcified and ectatic common iliac vessels. This is a case of patient with severe bilateral claudication, and as you can see, severe bilateral calcified osteal common iliac artery disease, particularly on the left. Planning out your intervention is key to success in complex iliac cases. One needs to decide what axis, ipsilateral versus contralateral, femoral versus radial or brachial, where the cover stents will be used and what size, as this will affect the size of sheaths needed. In this case, I placed kissing live stream stents 9 by 38 millimeter via bilateral 7 French axis. If 10 to 12 millimeter stents were needed, it would require an 8 French axis. And this is the final results of the post dilating with kissing balloons. The data for ICAST stents comes from the COBIS trial. This is a randomized trial, 168 iliac arteries with task B through D lesions, randomized to PTFE covered stents versus bare metal stents. The ICAST stent is a balloon expandable stent with an inner and outer layer of PTFE material. In this trial, covered stent had lower restenosis rates versus bare metal stents with hazard ratio of 0.35. In a subgroup analysis, lower restenosis rates were seen in covered stents in task C and D lesions versus bare metal stents. No difference was seen in task B lesions with covered versus bare metal stents. Long term, five year data showed improved patency at 18, 24, 36, and 60 months with covered stents. Here in a Kaplan curve, you can see the overall COBIS trial results. And as you can see, freedom from binary stenosis at 18 months is in favor for covered stents. The breakdown by task groups showed the greatest benefit of covered stents in task C and D lesions in the COBIS trial. The VBX stent graft is a balloon expandable covered stent. It was FDA approved in 2017 for the treatment of de novo or restenotic aorta iliac lesions, including bifurcation lesions. It consists of discrete stainless steel rings that are fully encapsulated in fluoropolymer and coated with heparin. The VBX Flex Multicenter Single Arm Study 
in 134 patients and 213 iliac lesions reported 100% technical success and 97% nine-month patency with this stent. This was in real-world iliac artery lesions, some of which had very torturous, severe calcified lesions with total occlusions. Direct stenting and or kissing stent treatment was seen for aortic iliac bifurcations. In task C and D lesion, comprised over a third of cases, the impressive nine-month patency of 95% was seen. Viabon endoprosthesis is a self-expanding stent with nitinol support extending along its entire length in an expanded PTFE lining. It was FDA approved for the treatment of patients with symptomatic iliac artery lesion. A prospective study of 61 iliac arteries reported primary patency of 98% at 6 months and 91% at 12 months. Two cases of embolization of the endoprosthesis to distal arteries were observed in that study. Viabon stents performed better in task D lesions, occlusive lesions with a total length more than 6 cm, occlusion length more than 3.5 cm, and in heavily calcified lesions. Livestream stent is a balloon expendable cover stent, the most recently US approved iliac stent. It's a stainless steel stent encapsulated between two stretched PTFE layers. It was evaluated in a multi-center single arm trial of 155 patients, the Bolster study. At nine months, primary patency was 89% and freedom from TLR was 96% by Kaplan-Meier estimate. Sky has a long history of prioritizing quality initiatives in the field of endovascular therapy for PAD. In 2014, we have published the first Sky-led document examining appropriate use criteria for ureter iliac arterial interventions. In 2017, second version of AUC was published, updating the initial recommendations made by an expert consensus group. In 2018, multi-societal ACC AHA AUC recommendations were published as well for appropriate, maybe appropriate, and rarely appropriate groups. These guidelines provide AUC recommendations for limited groups of devices when used in iliacs, such as balloon angioplasty stenting or atherectomy, and for few anatomical subsets, such as common iliac versus external iliac artery location. To address the lack of guidelines for clinicians, Sky Working Group has developed guidelines on device selection in aorta iliac arterial intervention. This was published in 2020 in CCI Journal. These guidelines address 11 anatomical subsets, such as lesion location, common versus external iliac disease, lesion length, focal versus diffuse disease, amount of calcification, CTO, and ISR lesions. These guidelines provide a comprehensive review of available devices for iliac interventions and their comp comparative effectiveness data. We have focused on safety and efficacy of groups of devices, but took into account the cost of the devices secondary to examining efficacy and safety data. Importantly, these guidelines provide clinicians with specific guidance, class of recommendation, and level of evidence for device selection when these devices are intended as definitive therapy rather than as devices for lesion preparation. The following tables list recommendations for covered stents. Balloon expandable stents on the left, self-expanding stents on the right. For example, for aorta iliac bifurcation lesions, balloon expandable stents have a class 1 recommendation with level of evidence B based on randomized data. In conclusion, endovascular therapy is very effective for patients with lifestyle limiting claudication and hemodynamically significant aorta iliac disease. Data support covered stent use in task C and D aortic iliac lesions. Covered stents should be used selectively to prevent and treat iliac artery perforations and excluding thrombus or arterial aneurysms. The 2020 Sky Guidelines document provides comprehensive guidance with specific recommendations, class of recommendation, and level of evidence for 11 different anatomical subsets and examines all major groups of devices when it comes to aorta iliac device selection. Thank you once again for joining us for CVI 2020 conference.